Welcome to Mars Hill United Methodist Church and Bright Hope Laurel United Methodist Church. We are combined worship today and I hope you are safe and warm at home uh, on a, a very cold Sunday morning. We are uh, planning ahead to make sure that we have a service for you on this, this wonderful second Sunday in Lent. Just to, um, just to let you know you're, you're welcome here. No matter uh, what you've been through or, or how God made you, we're glad you're here and you are welcome here. Uh, I want to let you know that there's a couple of Lenten opportunities this week. Uh, at, at 10 o'clock at Bright Hope Laurel on Tuesday, we have a spiritual support group where we're going to be looking at some things for Lent for the rest of Lenten time until Easter. Uh, and then on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Uh, at Mars Hill at the Fellowship Hall, we're going to be having a, a different Lenten study. So if you want to go to both, you are welcome to come to both. Uh, on Wednesdays at 6. So we invite you to be a part of, of either of those that work in your schedule or both of them if you would like to. We'd be happy to have you. Now I invite you to join in the call to worship those who are those few of us that are gathered here for music and uh, as you are gathered at home as well, you may join as well. Come children of God, rejoice in your maker. Sing songs and hymns, old and new. Celebrate with voices and instruments, with praise and prayers. Open your eyes to the life-giving presence of Jesus Christ. For well, God is already here, among us and within us. Let's praise God together. And now a reading from the Psalms. A reading from Psalm 91. Living in the Most High Shelter, Camping in the almighty shade, I say to the Lord, you are my refuge, my stronghold. You are my God, the one I trust. God will save you from the hunter's trap and from the deadly sickness. God will protect you with his pinions, and you will find refuge under his wings. God says, because you are devoted to me, I will rescue you. I will protect you because you know my name. Whenever you cry out to me, I will answer. I will be with you in troubling times. I will save you and glorify you. I will fill you full with old age. I will show you my salvation. Now we have children's sermon time. So I'm going to invite you know, the children who are listening to come up and, and see the screen. And uh, I'm going to imagine my, um, my girls from Bright Hope there, my, my kids. But we're all children of God. So let's all join in as, uh, in that sense of, of, of being a child of God. So I got a question. Is God a man or a woman? Yes. Ooh, I like that answer. Yes. <laughs> of course, kind of what I was going to say is no, because a man or a woman is just a human being. But it does tell us when God created people in God's own image, male and female, he created them. So both men and women, girls and boys, are made in the image of God. Both are. Now, there are times that we, we refer to God as our Father, and we do the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. And there are times we refer to God as, as Father because Jesus did, because Jesus wanted to think us, us to think of God as not just one who is great and vast and bigger than anything we can comprehend, but also one that is close and loving. And caring of us. Well, there are also places in the Bible where, where a very motherly image is used to describe God. And the text we have today, uh, Jesus 
has an image of where he is talking to Jerusalem like a mother hen. Who's got their wings out, bringing all the kids in and taking care of them and holding them close. There's also a place where God is referred to as the eagle, the mother eagle, who would teach the baby eagle how to, how to fly. And they would go out and fly, and the baby would be on the top, and then would learn to fly, being right on mama, always there to catch them. So the Bible gives us images of both father and mother, which is great and wonderful. Because sometimes some people feel much closer that they understand it as father and then maybe at other times that mother feels more comforting to them. And that's okay with God. God is bigger than all of that. It's also good because some boys and girls who later grew up to be men and women, maybe they didn't have a mother or they didn't have a father or Maybe their, their parent didn't have the ability to give them the love they needed. So they can always find that part of love in God. So we're grateful for that. We're grateful for the way that God wants to gather us up under the wings and protect us and take care of us. So let's say a prayer. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our mother and father. Thank you for being our mother and father. Help us to love others. Help us to love others. Amen. Amen. So it is time now where we're going to do our prayer concerns, and um, I'll celebrate everybody being safe. I hope you are safe and warm, uh, but we're going to do our, our prayer concerns and remember those who are hurting now, and we have lists both uh, for Bright Hope Laurel and for um, Mars Hill. We're also going to, of course, include Ukraine and all that's happening there is so heartbreaking. We don't even know what will be different in a couple of days. Um, but it is, it's, it's gonna be heartbreaking, whatever. It, it's too much to take in at times, the coverage of what is happening. So we, we, pray, we pray for them, we pray for Russia, we pray for, for Putin because Jesus told us to. <laughs> We, we pray for what is best to happen in the situation. Uh, we also want to include Gary McCollum, which is Bonnie, uh, Bonnie's brother-in-law. So we're going to include um, Gary on our list as well. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the way that your grace is in and through us. We give you thanks for your presence that surrounds us like mother's wings that are caring for us. We give you thanks for every person in our life that made love real for us and has left that imprint for us. Lord, we hold up to you, especially for this day, your healing, Jackson Prescott, Gary McCollum, Emily Harper, Baby Sunny, Joanne Groover, Howard Tate, Bill, <coughs> Carolyn Merkel, Sheila, Trish, Tish, Jim Newman, Ed Jones, Carol Wilson, Rosemary, Darlene, Danny Burnett, Ralph and Virginia Baines, Heather Kemp, Randy Benjamin, Sarah Brotherton, Glenn Hill, Dot Cody, Sandy Howell, Lloyd Parker, Dawn, Pat, Karen, Dee Dee's 
Swami, Jeff, Liz S, Chuck Kinsley, Sharon, Sherry Martin, Abigail, Adeline, Jane, Lynn White, Matt, Paula, John Baker, Anne and Jim Young, Maggie, Dustin Fender, Lynette Young, Lisa, Michael Tipton, Brian, Bill Welsh, Rita Mercer, Ilsa Young, Tina Blocker, Kay M. Selma, Micah, Amanda, Anglin, John Shelton, Michael, Susan Ray, Nancy Moore, Peg Kavanaugh, Howard and Susie Orgon, Dixie Tipton, Don Cahagan, Darlene Frost, Scott, Mark, Bobby Ann Snelson, Scott Crandall, Patrick and Tanya, Danny McIntosh, Tracy Clemens, Kara Lee, Sylvia, Frida, Linda Lauren, Cindy and Chip, John Taddy, Taddy, Luke Hodges, Chuck Kinsley, Tommy Van Hook, Simon Kurgoff, Bernice Von Cannon. We hold up to you all the refugees, all those who are, are fighting. We hold up to you the whole situation with Russia and Ukraine. Lord, we don't see a way out, but we know you are powerful and great. So we ask your miraculous touch to bring peace in some way to this situation. We hold it up to you for your healing. We ask all these things in your son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. There's coming a time of the great judgment Lord and the Savior will welcome you all. Will you be prepared for the journey to heaven on the great ship that carried us on. For the water so deep on the river shine so bright from heaven above and the midnight is past and a new day is dawning for the great ship will
searching God is teaching. Won't you ask him to show you the way? Fall down on your knees and pray for creation. Meet with your friend. Someday, for the water so deep on the river Jordan, and the light shines so bright. ship will anchor in the harbor of in the harbor of Our gospel reading today comes from the 13th chapter of Luke. Now, last week we heard from the 4th chapter of Luke, and that is where Jesus uh, had just been baptized, and he was being driven out by the Spirit into the wilderness for his 40 days of temptation and confronting evil. Now, uh, the, with the way Luke's gospel is set up, you have a place where Jesus is teaching and going around until the ninth chapter and he does still teach and go around after the ninth chapter but something happens in the ninth chapter where jesus goes up and has transfigured and he has a conversation with god and it says after he comes back down off that mountain that he sets his face towards jerusalem now we're going to be reading from the 13th chapter and he has not yet made it to jerusalem but he knows in his mind that his mind his face is set it's been revealed to him what he's going to have to do. That's what that verse tells us. He's setting his face to Jerusalem, to the cross, to what it lays ahead of him. So in the 13th chapter, we have these verses 31 through 35. Hear now the word. At that time, some Pharisees approached Jesus and said, Go, get away from here. Because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go tell that fox, Look, I am throwing out demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day I will complete my work. However, it's necessary for me to travel today, tomorrow, and the next day, because it's impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem! You who kill prophets and stone those who were sent to you. How often have I wanted to gather your people just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you didn't want that. Look, your house is abandoned and I tell you, you won't see me until the time comes when you say blessings on the one who comes in the name of and in the Lord's name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. 
our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know, if there's one quality that we could give to Jesus without reservation, it would be loving. He, he loved people. He healed people. He cared for people. He had compassion on the crowd. He gave his life out of love. So Jesus is loving. However, the type of loving that Jesus is is not just uh, rainbows and butterflies and flower kind of uh lovely, sweet, loving. Jesus is, is tough, he's hard, he's strong and resilient. In this passage, we have some Pharisees. Now, usually the Pharisees get kind of the brunt of the attack, like these Pharisees are fighting with Jesus and they're doing something different. It seems like here, these Pharisees, Particular ones are trying to look out for Jesus. So he wasn't at war with all the Pharisees. And he said, you need to watch out. Herod's got plans to kill you. Jesus says, you go tell that fox. Now, fox is not just a cute little woodland creature that jumps in the snow. It's just adorable. That's not how we think about fox in that time. And it's not used when it's used to uh, describe people not like the way we look at it now, like sexy or attractive. No, think of Aesop's fables with the fox. This is a cunning creature. This is like the original House of Slytherin. This is, these are the ones who, who are really ambitious and cunning, and, and you need to watch out for them. So Jesus says, you tell that fox. I'm going to be healing, casting out demons. I'm going to be working here and here on the next couple of days. So he's basically saying, this is my itinerary. Bring it. I mean... It's, it's kind of gangster, really. It, it, it really is. He is saying, this is where I'm going to be. Bring it to me. And I know you are not going to. He already knew. One, he did not need to be afraid of being killed because he already knew he was going to be killed. That had already been revealed to him. He also already knew where he was going to be killed. That had been revealed to him. And it wasn't going to be out while he's doing his teaching and his healing and is, is, is casting out demons. That's not when it's going to happen. It's going to happen when he's in Jerusalem. He already knows that. Herod has got nothing to throw at Jesus to give him any pause at this moment. Now, there is the time right before the crucifixion when it's close and it's really real that Jesus does go to God and really pours out the anguish over what it is. But right now, he knows what it is. He knows what his job is. And he's, he's got his face set to it. There's work that needs to be done before this happens. Herod is not going to get in his way. He knows that. It is interesting the way that the Greek speaks of this, and I want to get the exact, so the, the translation from the biblical scholar I use most often, because he talks about when on that third day he'll be completed with his work, which is kind of an odd way to say it. In fact, the literal translation where he says it is, um, I have been completed on the third day. Now, Greek, of course, anytime you're translating one thing to another language, it doesn't quite line up right, but that's like the literal word-for-word -word Greek translation. And it's a little bit odd. Because if we, we think about it, if you think about things being completed in three days, there's no way we can't have our minds go to the resurrection. That on the third day, he was resurrected. I think that is intentional. I think the verbiage in here lets us clearly know the cross, the death, and the resurrection is on the horizon. That the healing he is doing now, that he's going around healing people, is connected to the work on what the cross will be, what the work on the cross will be. That these are not merely separate events. 
Jesus was a teacher and healer while he walked the earth. And for us, for us now, Christ is a teacher and a healer still today. And something happened on the cross that brought healing in a new way to the world. That brought a pathway for all of us to reach God more easily. Jesus is starting his work now despite this threat of death because it is in fact this that threat of death that will complete his work when he is killed on the cross. Then he talks about Jerusalem. He bemoans and is upset by what happens in Jerusalem. See, Jerusalem is the center, the understanding of the center of the, of the religious world. And honestly, it still is for several religions, actually. The three monotheistic religions see, see Jerusalem as the center point. It's the middle of the spiritual world. For, for theist. It is this place where God lived, walked around, and died. It is a holy space, a holy place. It is joyous and wonderful and heartbreaking and sad. Jesus has set his face to Jerusalem. He knows what he is going to face. He knows what is ahead of him. And he is sad that this holy place of Jerusalem is the place marked for death. Not just for him, but for prophets before him. It's a place that has been set for death since him too with the bloody wars that have occurred there a couple times in history when streets were called to said to read run ankle deep in blood and there are still killing there are still people who are killed for their faith there's Martin Luther King Jr there are many others through faithful work, were slaughtered. Jesus was one. Jesus was the one that laid the pathway for us all. But at this moment, I think he sees himself in a connection to all of this, to the pain and suffering in the world. There is this part of God which is bigger than male and female, bigger than any of us. This part of God that was in Christ, was within flesh, was liable to the mourning and the hurt and the challenge therein. He calls out to Jerusalem and says, Oh, if only, if only I could gather you like a mother hen, protecting, pulling together. You know, the word that is used for chicks in, in, in Greek tecton is actually the word for child. And you know, because it's saying child of a hen, that it is a chick. That's an aspect of the Greek language. But for us, I think there's a clear message too that child, children of God. Jesus is wanting to protect us and gather us in. Yeah, not that everything is going to be rainbow and sunshine all the time. We know that there isn't. There is suffering. There is challenge. Our world is full of it right now. There's an anxiety in the air at the moment because we don't know what's going to happen. We, we can feel and have compassion and hurt for those in Ukraine that are suffering, but we also have some anxiety about what is going to happen with Russia and the rest of the world. What is going to happen to us? This, this country, this man, Putin, has access to, to nuclear warheads, and that is that's scary. 
We have enough of our own anxiety within our own country. And the fact that we can't seem to come together in a way where we recognize what brings us together as Americans is, is bigger than what separates us. Uh, the, uh, the other political party is considered the greatest threat there is. Uh, to, to, no matter which side you look at. I mean, so yes, there are people in the middle. But it's a tough time. I, I don't think, I've never felt in my life so much the fact that I don't know what the future's going to bring. I don't. I mean, I guess none of us ever do. But it feels much more real, much more tangible right now. Whatever it brings. Whatever it looks like. Jesus paved the way for us. Jesus' strength, these wings of healing through the work of the cross are around us. I think of, of Charles Wesley's uh, Christmas hymn, He's Risen with Healing. Hark the Herald Angel sang, He's Risen with Healing in His Wings. I, I've sang that many times, but as I was studying this passage this week, that, that line made so much more sense to me that this is what he was talking about. These wings of care, bringing in the children, trying to protect them, giving them a chance for this work of healing, for the work for us to heal, heal our anxiety, Heal our hate towards others which are that cause the anxiety and cause the pain. To heal the wounds of our lives that are within us. He has risen with healing for all these things. It doesn't mean there won't be suffering. It doesn't mean there isn't suffering right now. But it does mean that there is hope, that there is more to the story. It does not end with the foxes of the world who plan out murder. It ends with the God that creates healing and life everlasting. For this, we give thanks. Let us pray. Gracious God, you, you know our hearts. You know us completely. You know the places of anxiety and stress in our life right now. You know the place where our hearts are hurting for others and for our own wounds and fears. You know all the wounds of our lives. You know the sore places that have been left in our spirits. And you know the ways that those wounds make it so hard for us to follow your calling. To love. Love not because people deserve it, but because you called us to love. To forgive with that same reckless abandon. called us to move beyond ourselves, to carry your love, your agape, your unconditional love into the world. Lord, you know when we have failed to do this. The times we've gotten uh, pulled away by selfishness and challenge and, and our own worries and we have forgotten this calling of yours. So Lord, in silence, we lift to you all those things we have done and left undone that has fallen short of that, your great calling, and we hold up to you our wounds and pains, Lord, that you might have that healing of wings that in our spirit to bring us to grace and wholeness.
Imagine the brush of wings surrounding you, pulling you close, a mother's love and protection, cleansing your hearts and souls and minds, renewing you for the work of love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Christ was crucified and resurrected that we might know the fullness of healing, the fullness of life. No, without doubt, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and made new. Thanks be to God. You can play the game, you can act out the part, but you know it wasn't written for you. Tell me, how can you stand there with your foolish heart? Ashamed of telling the truth. One thing can lead to another, it doesn't take any sacrifice. Father and mother, sister and brother, if it feels right, don't think twice. Shower the people you love with love. Show them the way.
We give the thanks for all those who have given and uh, for all the gifts that has been given that, that keep the ministry of these churches going. So I invite you to sing with us as we sing the doxology. <laughs> given and we ask all that is given that it be blessed towards God's work in the world the furtherment of God's kingdom so I invite you coming forth from this worship to carry forth the light of Christ in you and and be blessed to be furthering God's kingdom on this earth in your life and your love and your care for others go in peace go in power <laughs> 